Today we're going to be taking a look at the GJD Clarius Illuminator range from GJD. I've also got Neil today who's going to go through all the kind of background with the Clarius Lighting range and all the different products that are available. And so the great piece of kit, especially with the Dark Knights coming in now as well, and also different things you can do with the IR units and also the white light versions of the Clarius range. And Neil's got some demo videos of showing me how these work at night and I'll also be going through the web front end of one of the hybrid units which is both IR and white light as well and there's a couple of different things that you can do with these so I'll be handing over to Neil who's going to go through some slides and then it'll be coming back to myself and just go through some of the web front end of one of the units that we have in the office there so if you want to take it away there Neil Hi good morning everybody thanks for joining us I'm uh, Neil Lennessy of uh, GJD. I'm the technical sales manager and I have been for the past 11 years. So now I'm just going to share my screen with you all and then run through some of the products in the Clarius range. Can you all see that? Can you see that okay, Nathan? Yeah, that's come through, yeah. All right, I'm just going to turn my video off as well. Thanks for joining us. Company overview, Clarius range overview benefits of using Clarius Lighting and then Nathan's going to do a live demo of the web configuration through our hybrid illuminator and then a question and answers session after this. GJD, we are a manufacturer. We established in 1983. We've been manufacturing at our place now in Manchester for 38 years. And over the years, we've acquired various companies. 2012, we acquired Advanced LED Technology. They were the original Clarius inventors of our illuminators. 2016, we acquired a Swedish company called MSEC. And then 2017, acquired Radiovisor. They were the first company to make active infrared point to point beams back in 1929. 2017, we received Queen's Award for our contribution to export for international trade. And carrying on in 2017, we established GJD USA. So we've got an office in Los Angeles. Some of the OEM customers that we manufacture for. Um, GJD have uh, three uh, products. We have detection, LED lighting, voice deterrence, as well in our portfolio. But today I'm going to concentrate on LED lighting. So here's a bit of an overview of the Clarius range. We have infrared and we have white light versions. Benefits of using the Clarius range. In the box, they all come with the interchangeable diffusers, which can match the camera field of view. They all come with dual core Osram LED illuminators. It has a special clean light coating on the front of the diffuser. So if it gets dusty, mucky, a bit of rain can clean it off. We have a, a lighting design service and some of the illuminators can achieve distances up to 370 meters as well. We've got PoE versions and 12 to 24 volt versions available, as well as full IP connectivity types, which can connect into your VMS, etc. So the illuminators all have an integral photo cell. So if it gets dark, it'll bring the light on. If it gets the daylight, it'll switch off. The housings are not painted, they're anodized, so it disperses the heat more cor correctly and they all, all come with uh, telemetry and day night day night switching as standard so this is the interchangeable diffusers which can match the field of view the standard in the box you've got 10 30 and 60 and 95 degrees so you could use a 10 10 degree diffuser for long range or the 95 for short distance but wide angle Right, we've got small, small POEs, medium, medium POEs, large, extra large. We've got dual illuminators as well, so you can achieve 180 degree illumination or up to 360 degrees using four illuminators if needed. Same with uh, the white lights, small to extra large duals as well. The white lights are all controllable. There's a little pot on the side where you can reduce the brightness if needed so you could have like different different areas with different emitting different light levels 
as well. The Clarius Hybrid, this recently new illuminator that we launched in September. This is combining IR and white light. So you could use the infrared at night time with your camera. And then if you use line crossing or using one of the GJD detectors, you could enable the white light to come on at certain levels or you could make it strobe. But this particular unit in the infrared can do up to 187 meters at 10 degrees and up to 110, 140 meters on the white light. And this is PoE Plus. It is networkable through the onboard web browser. You could create different events through your Hick Central with the white light. It could come on in the evening, giving 5% light. And then if detection area or line crossing or motion detection gets triggered, you could put the light to full brightness as well. Some of the accessories we do, you may not be able to fix the, the illuminator straight onto the wall and angle it. So you could use the single mount bracket. So you've got an 180 degree rotation. We have double brackets, triple brackets and pole mount crap brackets, as well as RPSUs. So I'm just going to run through some of the considerations using infrared or white light. So if, if you use an infrared, you could get the enhance your uh, clarity on a black and white picture. Does the customer want covert on the infrared or non-covert? Does the customer want white light to enable a color picture? The distance is always good to consider what you want to achieve. The uh, angle, what angle you need to use to match your camera field of view. The camera type, is it a PTZ? Do you want 360 degree illumination, 270 degrees, 180 degrees? Are you using a fixed camera, a multi-sensor camera, a high resolution camera? And then the last bit is, will video analytics be used? Typically when using analytics, you require more light. So this is a couple of images we was taken the other week. This was just monitoring our goods in back door. So you can see using uh, the infrared illuminator, the clarity of the picture is absolutely great. And then one of my tech lads, Gary, uh, he just come onto the scene and then we did a bit of a zoom in. So you can see, you could get full facial recognition off that image. This was a camera that was I was testing in my garden as well. So it is, it's quite dark behind, behind my property. There is a bit of ambient light in the background. So this was with the integral infrared switched off on the camera. And then we enabled the integral IR. Decent picture. My camera was claiming to do 30, 40 meters, but it, it, it won't see that and you won't get a clear image. You can see around the sides where it's a little bit grayed out. And then enabling Larius Illuminator, you can see the clarity of the picture. That has enhanced the picture a, a lot. And then moving on on the hybrid to the white light version. So you can see the color forensics and it's you can also use the white light as a good active deterrent. A zoomed in picture, the built in infrared, decent enough. But if you want full true like black and white HD picture, use a Clarius Illuminator. You can see there on the edge chair, you can actually see through the bars of the seat prior to that picture. You can see how much it enhances your picture using separate infrareds. And then the color picture, you can see all the color detail, etc. So you get a nice clear shot of somebody's face. The video where when I embedded it into the PowerPoint, it slowed the video right down. You can see the changeover state from black and white to color from the camera was pretty much instant. Long range surveillance. This was uh, an analytics were being used on this perimeter. You can see use, using the integral IR on the left, the picture is very dark and it's only quite clear when you're right near the camera. So we used a 10 degree medium illuminator on this, just firing straight down. You can see on the right, and the image, how clear the, the camera picture is now. Using the angle for the camera field of view, that's always important. You can see on the three images, 
like the, the wrong diffuser has been used on the left hand image. So the, the light beam is very narrow. The light beam is very wide, not matching the camera field of view on the middle image. And then the right hand image is matching the correct angle. You can see here with the wrong diffusers installed where it's greyed out on the left hand side and the right hand side on the colour picture. So it's always key to get the, the di correct diffuser to match your field of view. Typically people use 10 degrees for perimeters and then uh, to infill other areas that we use a 30 or a 60 or a 95. Analytics. I know a lot of companies that I deal with rely on camera analytics, line crossing, detection area. But the key thing with integral infrared is it attracts insects and spiders, which will cause a lot of false positives because the, the spider's webs are very reflective. If your camera is quite a powerful uh, high resolution and the infrared goes back into the camera, it can make it go out. So we always suggest disabling the integral IR Another analytics job, industrial estate, where it's protecting plant machinery, diggers, tractors, etc. When the lorries come round and other vehicles on the right hand side, car headlights are triggering the line crossing. So we disable the integral IR and use one of our small infrareds, 10 degrees, to go right down the perimeter. You can see there, so when the car headlights come on, it's not going to affect the, the line crossing on that palisade fence. A new product that we've launched, these, these are 230 volts for commercial, residential. We do a Clarius Star floodlight without PIR, which can get integrated into the GJD lighting systems. Or if you're retrofitting, so you may have an existing floodlight, a halogen type with a PIR on, you could fit one of the GJD LEDs. These are 20 watts as well. So now the nights are drawing in, burglaries will probably increase and crime. So we've got our security lighting controllers. We have a single zone, a dual zone and a four zone. And you can connect the Clarius illuminators or the Clarius star illuminators into these control panels. And it can bring your lights on controlled by the integral photo cells of our PIRs. It can also give you presence detection in the day or nighttime using the audible warning. Rather than listening to the beeps, you can control, you can record a six second voice message. So it could be like patio area, garage, driveway, etc. And all these can be linked into your CCTV systems. There's programmable timers on the DigiZone system. So your lights could come on at a certain time in the morning and then go off. And then same in the evening, it could control your decorative lighting, etc. This is just a, a general schematic using a, a GJD floodlight, opal detector, a keypad in your living room or hallway or back garden connected to a four zone expansion unit which is the hub where everything gets wired back to typically this is just a schematic you can have three detectors per zone each zone can switch up to 750 watts of led lighting so overall you've got three kilowatts of lighting over four zones you can group the different areas so if one detector went off it could bring the the lights on on all the property or just on individual zones. That's over to you, Nathan. No worries, Neil, that's great. There's definitely a lot of benefits of using the Clarius detectors. I'll just share my screen over awesome. now, um, that one. So I've got one of the hybrid units. Let's refresh my page, log back in. So the Clarius hybrid illuminators can be IP configurable as well. So it's, you can actually have a web front end to access them. This is also one of the PoE powered versions as well. So it's just plugged in a PoE switch that we have in our office. So if I log in to this one, so you can actually have events trigger the illuminators themselves. So you can have the events enabled or disabled. You can see there's already one configured for a low light, which is working off the photo cell. It's actually built into the illuminator itself, but there's other events that you can actually configure on this as well. So if we go into add an event, we can give the event name itself. 
and then there's a few different options that we've got in there so we can have a digital input so this can be, can be from an ip event for example from there and we've also got a timer slash heartbeat so you can have a timer set when you want the unit to come on within that and we can also go into temperature as well within those for the events if we edit the low light detection you can see that the control hybrid light is set as the action type and the start action would be the IR illuminate has actually come on and you can set that to visible which would be the white light you can actually also set it to start the strobe light or stop the strobe light on the actual illuminator itself as well within that you can also have as I mentioned, IP events triggering through to the Clarius unit. This is something that we're looking into with the Hike Central VMS to have the events from Hike Central trigger through to the Clarius Illuminators. So if there's an event that's happened on site, you can actually have all the Illuminators turn on at the same time, all the white lights come on across the site. So instead of just linking to one unit where that camera is mounted, you would have an alarm trigger all the lights in one site that you've got there instead of having it just local to that one unit and can be site-wide uh, for the system itself. If we go into our LED settings, so we can actually adjust the power of both the visible white light and also the IR illuminators on here. So these are currently set to 100%, but we can actually drop these down um, depending on the illumination that we're wanting, which I'm going to show in a moment with one of our color view cameras that we have in here as well. And you can also manually control these units as well. So you can manually trigger the strobe light and you can just manually turn on the actual power of the illuminator itself. And you can see we've got the status of the actual unit. So the LED's status is currently not percent actually gives us the ambient light in Lux, and so the ambient light in the room is uh, 78 Lux at the moment. Tampering detection is armed, so if the tamp is triggered on the unit, um, that can actually trigger an event. And the current device temperature is 26 degrees as well within that. We go into unit configuration. This is where we'd actually change the IP settings of the unit itself and also the port and that's needed within that and we can actually upload our HTTPS certificates as well if that is needed to meet the site requirements and also make the connection secure for that. You can also export and import your configuration settings for the Clarius detectors so you can copy that across where needed and obviously we've also got the firmware updates is an IP device within that as well. So there are firmware updates and that makes it possible for GJT to add in new functionality where needed as well within the unit. So if I go into the web front end of our color view camera, we have got, so this is just a standard color view camera that we have. Um, I've just got on my desk at the moment. What we can actually do is trigger the white light strobe light manually. So if I start that, you can actually see the strobe lights triggering and that is really bright even with the lights on in the room that I'm in currently. It is visible and it is quite a bright light with it set to 100% on there as well. And But if I turn off the lights in our room, you can see the image has gone dark. This is a colour view camera so there is some ambient lighting but you can see there there is, you get, can get motion blur over the image just because there's a lot less light in the actual image itself, but I can turn on the actual light itself. I can actually set that to visible light. You can see there, you don't get the same motion blur and it is actually illuminated from that on there. And if we actually drew the strobe light, we can see that's much brighter, especially if the dark nights if you, you're using a standard IR camera, you can actually use an event to trigger the strobe light on the LED illuminator itself within that as well for that. So there are a number of different scenarios that you can use these illuminators in and there are benefits to use them as well, especially the newer hybrid units. So even if you're using a standard camera with IR, 
you can actually set the event to trigger the strobe light effect, which I know has been popular on some of the color view ranges of cameras and the live guard cameras. With the Clarius illuminators, obviously the LEDs are a lot more powerful and it will work as a much better deterrent with the brightness of the actual LEDs themselves. And it gives you that added benefit of being able to uh, switch between the IR mode and also the visible light as well on the units themselves. So that's just a quick run through of the web front end of the hybrid illuminators. What we will be doing is putting together a video showing the integration with Hagsent we'll use in IP based events, which can actually trigger the Clarius illuminators from GJD as well. And so you can do all different kinds of events with those and link those into your VMS solution that way. But if you have any questions, if you put them in the Q&A section on Zoom and myself and Neil, and we'll be able to start taking a look through those as you send them in now. So someone's asked, with the hybrid illuminator having a temperature displayed, is there a shut off point if the illuminator itself gets too hot? The temperature? Yeah. The function, it's to do with uh, like the home automation side. So you could, if it gets uh, if it gets too cold, you could bring on the light in the refrigerated area to notify somebody that the, the fridge is too cold or too hot. That's what it's, it's used for. Right, that's pretty interesting on that. I think it's also because my, I think it's one of my colleagues that might have put that question in because they did cover the strobe light up earlier as well. Yeah. With, with that one. Can they use general output triggers so physical alarm inputs to trigger the illuminators? Uh, you can on the 12 to 24 volt versions and the PoE types using the input triggers. The hybrid doesn't have a telemetry switching function on it. You'd have to do it through like URL commands, yeah, etc. But no, generally the, the normal PoE versions, the standard IP versions, infrared or white light, you can. And then Chris Sass regarding the availability of the hybrid illuminators. I can send you over an email, Chris, from our sales team for the stock availability of these units. I'll get that sent across and shortly after this webinar for those. And Reese has also said to tell Neil he has a nice garden. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. No, uh, about three years ago when I moved into my house, we had loads of kids like play play equipment. We was bored one Friday night and did some tests. And then recently my garden is starting to look a bit nicer. <laughs> yeah, the, the pictures are a lot more cleaner now. Thank you. Yeah. No worries. So I think that's all the questions that we've had there, but feel free to contact our pre-sales team at Dynamic and we'll be able to help with any designs or anything like that. Oh, actually, another one's just come through. If there's any design tools to help put together the beam patterns, et cetera, for sites. Uh, we have got some design tools on our website. We've, well, we've just did a rebrand on the GJD website, so not all the function, it's not all functioning as it should at the moment. We've got a couple of issues. But if you know your camera type, your distance, etc., you can you can run a report and it'll tell you exactly which diffuser to use with which camera. It will show, it, we've got, I've got all the beam patterns as well, which I can share with you, Chris. That's not a problem. Uh, I'll get some de contact details off Nathan. Yeah. Or if you want to get in touch with me directly, my details are, are actually on our website as well. We also offer a light design because certain sites require a certain looks level all the way around, especially like government times. That's spot on. And what I'll do after the webinar as well is I'll send out a copy of the slides that Nick Neil's put together as well and also just some links to the different units on our website and the tools section on the a GJD website, new one as well, which will get sent across to everyone that's on the webinar as well. Yeah. Um, but thank you for joining us both today. And thanks to Neil as well for taking the time to co-host the webinar with me today and do predominantly most of the talking today as well. Um, oh, thank you. For the Clarius range. But it's been great as always, Neil. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Anytime. No worries. And uh, thank you all the attendees who came on today and stop working just to listen to me and Nathan. Yeah, <laughs> no worries, but thanks to you all and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next webinar as well when that's launched. Brilliant, right, thank you. Cheers. Cheers, thank you, bye-bye.